This video is a part of the Beginner's Guide to Masking in Blender series. Each video builds upon the information from the previous video, so if you're a beginner, it's best to watch them in order. And if you don't want to wait for them to come out one at a time on YouTube, you can get the entire series all at once for free by going to blenderfrenzy.gumroad.com. Just click on Frenzy Freebies, where you can get lots of stuff to follow along with my tutorials. Just click Add to Cart, and then check out. Fill in your email address and use discount code FREEBIE to get $0 per month. Or of course you can pay $2 a month to show your support if you want, it's up to you. But either way, you will have access to lots of videos and files to follow along with my tutorials. Also, I've created a standalone course for this series that you can purchase if you want to say thank you. You will get everything from the Frenzy Freebies, plus you will get access to my finished blend files, and you'll be able to download the videos for offline playback. So thank you for your support, and on with the show. Welcome to Blender Frenzy. So I used to say, welcome back to Blender Frenzy, until I watched an Ian Hubert video in which he said, that it was very presumptuous to assume that someone had already been here <laughs> and that they were following. And uh, I always thought it was kind of like a nice welcome, like, oh, welcome back. Like, I am assuming you're part of my uh, group. Like, you're in the in crowd. So I always say welcome back. But now I'm self-conscious about that. So let me know what you think in the comments. Should I say welcome back or should I just say welcome? So for now... Welcome, or welcome back, to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, kicking off a new series, A Beginner's Guide to Masking in Blender. Uh, and I've wanted to do this for a long time. I've done a little bit of it before, uh, but I wanted to do uh, a little bit more in-depth uh, series. So this is just a, a brief overview and intro of what uh, Blender can do with the masks and what masks are, just generally speaking. So a mask in any image or video software is a black and white image that another image or video uses as information for transparency. So where there is all white, it is fully opaque or visible, and where it is all black, it is fully transparent or invisible, and then all the shades in between are a level of transparency. So let me show you what I mean. I've got two masks here. We've got a circle mask here, and we've got a square mask. And if I turn on my overlays, you can see what is happening already, that anywhere the uh, square and the circle masks are, you can see the image that is using those masks. Um, now, what's happening is if we come over here to our alpha, you can see it's a black and white image. This is called the alpha mask or the transparency mask. Um, so alpha mask and transparency are kind of used interchangeably. They do have a little bit different meanings, but basically it's essentially the same thing. So this is an alpha mask, even though it's not using alpha or transparency itself, it actually just tells another image where the alpha is. And if we come back up here to our color and alpha, this is what we see. This is technically not the color in the alpha. This is just color. Um, I think this is a glitch. I'm not sure, or a bug in Blender. I'm not entirely sure. But let me show you what it's really supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like this. So here in the compositor, you can see that um, we have the image and everything only showing where our masks are and everything else is transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quick render this and then come over here and use our render result. And then you can see this is really what it's supposed to look like. And then um, everywhere I move these masks, you can see. Now, if I scale the feather of these masks, you can see that we have it fading into transparency. And that is because we have full white inside here, and then we have full black outside, and then in between we have a gradient and again we can come up to our alpha to see what's happening here so that's what that looks like let's just scale those down here and i'm just going to move these over now we can also pull up the properties over here and again i'm just going over this is an overview so i'm not going to go uh like button by button. If you want to see my buttons, it's down here. Um, by the way, uh, if you, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can see them down down over here. 
And that's because the screencast keys in Blender is not working with Blender 2.93, which is what I'm using here. So that's not working yet. So this is my temporary substitute. Um, but we can come over to mask here, this mask tab, and then the opacity, we can bring that down. And you can see what's happening there. Um, and that is just changing the white and black values. Again, if we come over to our alpha, you can see that that's just making that darker and lighter. Um, we can also uh, invert them. So where everything inside is invisible and everything outside is visible. So let's come back over to our alpha. You can see that's what it looks like there. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that back here. So that's the very basics of what a mask is and how it operates. Um, Blender has four editors aside from the 3D viewport, which I'll get to, but it has four editors where you can create masks natively, meaning from that editor, you can make a mask. And so these masks here I've made and I've named them mask demo. If I come over to the movie clip editor, you can also make masks here. Oh, by the way, in the image editor, uh, this is your default, your view, but if you come up to here and go to mask, you can uh, have access to the mask information. Same thing with the movie clip editor. Uh, it Your default is your tracking, so this is where you would load in your footage if you wanted to do motion tracking, uh, but then you'd come here to mask, and then you can actually add masks along with your tracking information, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna come over here to our mask demo, which is what I had before, and you can see our mask information. I can come up to mask display and uh, check combined here and we can see what's happening. Now again, I think that this uh, black area is supposed to be transparent. I don't know if this is a bug. Maybe it's not supposed to be like that, but here you can see uh, it's this, we have this access to all of the same um, controls for that. Um, and also we can add a mask. Here, this is the circle and the square that I've added that you can see, but you can also control uh, right, is it right click? Nope, just control click. Uh, and you control click like this, or you can control click and drag, which drags out a curve. And so you can uh, edit that for curves and different um, shapes and make them. Oops, I added one to that one, which I wasn't trying to do. Um, oh, and I added another one, whoops. <laughs> Okay, I gotta select that one, there we go. And so we can have that and we can also move that around to wherever we want. Uh, but we come over here, it's the same thing here. So we could do the same thing, control click here. So we can make masks natively in the image editor, the movie clip editor, and the compositor. So um, this is the mask that we had before, mask demo, which uh, if we just update that, you can see it updates just refreshing something. Sometimes if you just double click backdrop, it'll refresh. But that's one we've already made that we pulled into the compositor, but we can actually use the box mask node uh, from the compositor and plug that in. And then you can see, we can change the size and the shape and the position of where the box is to show that. And I can also choose here from add to subtract or multiply, but that's not doing anything. You can see because adding means that it's adding the, the it's, this is white. But if I, if I turn this to subtract, this is all black, but that means everything is black. So your best bet is to instead just add in a color invert and then we invert that. So this is a mask that is native to the compositor. We also have the video editing, the video video sequence editor. We used a color strip as our mask. So everywhere this color strip appears, uh, that is where the image appears. We can hide that mask there. You can see the full image. And then we use the color strip as a mask. But basically I just uh, took this color strip and I played around with the transforms here, the position and the scale and the rotation and that is native to the video editor. Now we can also uh, take this and instead of using a strip as a mask, we can use, let's hide that. We can actually just use the mask we created. So we can pull that from the other editors. Uh, you can see our mask demo right here.
So there you go. That's what a mask is. And those are the four editors where you can create masks natively in Blender or pull them from other editors. And here are just a few examples of how you can use those masks. So let's go back to this one. And if I duplicate the footage and put it underneath it and give it a different color, we can have something that's like this. So that we've got our mask affecting our London picture on top of it, which is overlaying on top of the original picture just in black and white. And we get something like this. And then we can even animate the color strip going across to um, give it a little bit of stylized look if you were to do a promo for London or something. That's uh, that's one way you can use it. Another way you can use it is blurring out people's faces or information like on people's shirts or license plates on cars. Um, so something like this and uh, let's take a look at what that would look like. So let's go over to our image editor and let's go to our alpha and go to our blur and then you can see that this is what's being used here as our mask and uh, this is just a still image but if we come to a movie clip editor and we load it in the footage here we could come to our tracking and track video footage and track uh, a point on someone's face and then go to our mask make a mask around the face and parent that to that track so it follows their face. So this is how you would blur somebody's face out in video footage or somebody's shirt like a logo. And if you wanted to create transitions between one image to another or one video to another, if you wanted to create your own transitions, you could model something like this. Ta-da! Where you have all white and then you have this cool little animation effect to all black. And if we go into our camera, we can see that we have something like this. There we go. So something like that. So what you would do is you would animate this like this and render it out into an image sequence. And then you would use that image sequence uh, in the video sequence editor and then use that image sequence as a mask over two videos that are on top of each other. And the one that on top gets the mask and so it's visible here and then you go and then it's invisible revealing the one on bottom so it's a transition from one image to another or one video to another now i just uh, the other night um kind of quickly made this with geometry nodes um kind of by accident um because i really don't know how geometry nodes work i'm just barely scratching the surface with this, but um, this is what I came up with by watching several tutorials and tr testing out my own thing. And I accidentally came upon something that looks really cool like this. At least I think it looks cool. Possibilities here are endless, obviously. There you go. That is the overview of this coming series for masking. Stay tuned and you'll see me in the next one.